All right, y'all, welcome to Chef Outdoors. We're breaking my stuff so you don't have to. You saw the previous little intro video thing we got here. I got water in my lower cylinder. I found that out because I was changing plugs and my bottom plug was having some spark issues. I pulled it out and I was rust on it. All right, and what we did is we did full compression on both sides of the engine. Compression's within spec, so I'm hoping that this uh, engine is still salvageable. I gotta see the scoring or pinning in the cylinder, how much water damage is in here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this water jacket and cylinder head off. We're gonna go right into it. I'm not even gonna pull them apart separately. I'm gonna rip off this cylinder head and then I'm gonna see uh, if there's a hole in the head or a gasket break on the inside that allowed water to intrude into that bottom cylinder. So uh, these are 11 millimeters, I believe. What is this? No, it's 12. 12 millimeter on a cylinder head and a 10 millimeter on the water jacket. Uh, let's get to it and start ripping this apart. You know, check it out, like and subscribe to Chef Outdoors. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start ripping this apart. Um, I got a quarter inch drive here uh, on a 12 millimeter and I'm just going to start ripping apart uh, this head. All right. I'm going to leave the water jacket on, I think, for now. <sighs> you, you know, I take that back. I'm going to rip the water jacket off too. I'm going to start with that because I, I got to rip it all apart anyway. Might as well. Um, I don't need to pull the thermostat. I'm going to. I'm just going to pull it all. Let's pull it all and break it down. I'm, I'm just not going to leave nothing to chance here. So this means nothing. I'm just pulling this part. This is the thermostat housing. Um, but you never know. I've seen um, holes in the back of these. It, but if it was up here, I'd have <laughs> the engine would be already be done. But I'm gonna pull it all apart just for good measure. All right. Just make sure you keep everything together. Um, it's very important not to lose everything. Can you use an electric? I could. You could use electric. Um, I like to feel, and that's why I don't Especially use electric. Break it loose. Right. So you know these could be corroded in here. And this could turn into a whole job of getting rid of this engine simply because um, these bolts could be uh, locked in here. And if they are, then I'm going to hit them with some PB Blaster or I'm going to get a torch and I'm going to heat them up and try to get them out without snapping them off inside the, the engine block. Um, and that's why I don't use air. I want to feel everything that I'm doing. Like this bolt right now is very tough and it could break. Um, and honestly, I don't even like using a ratchet this big because I can snap these uh, 10 millimeter quarter 20s really easily and I don't want to risk it. And this one's giving me a little bit of resistance and I, I know some are going to give me a lot more. See like this one came right off, look how easy. But this one up top was giving me a lot more resistance and you know, you really want to feel um, what's going on while you're working on it. Uh, you got to have a sense of um, what's happening to the metal as you're taking it apart, especially on these old engines. Um, it's very important. This one's tripping me out a little bit. Uh, it might break still. Nah, it's loosening good. A lot of times I'll use a small quarter 20. Um, I mean a small um, quarter inch drive ratchet uh, just so I can't put a lot of weight on it and snap them because I will just snap the crap out of them. Uh, I pulled these thermostats out a long time ago and it looks pretty good in there. I'm just gonna keep it all together. I'm a, I don't know if I'm reusing these heads. I wanna see what everything looks like. And then let's go ahead and go right down. You know, once you loosen all these, you could definitely use, oh, see like that one. You could definitely use a, um, a uh, impact or something to um, put it apart with, but I at least want to do that first hit on every one of them. Like I know this one's really crappy and I don't like it. Um, I'm afraid of breaking them, so I'm just loosening them all up. Um, when you put these back together, there is a torque pattern with a torque spec sheet and you will need a torque wrench. So they're at the proper foot or inch pounds as specified by the manufacturer. Numbered so too. yeah, and they're numbered. So when you go back with your um, manual or your online torque spec sheet, you have a pattern in which you gotta torque these back down so that the gasket on the um, cylinder head and water jacket are done correctly. So these are hard to get to in the bottom. I got a deep well. 10 millimeter on this water jacket and I'm gonna have to get a shallow well to be able to get to these so I'm gonna go ahead and get that now and we'll be right back all right I got a I got a short well 10 millimeter all right I got the deep well I'm just gonna put it over here with my stuff and it's gonna allow me to get to these bottom bolts and uh, see what we can do here okay loose good this one I'm gonna have to use a wrench or a swivel socket on down there um, you can't get to it so you have to get a little bit more creative. All right, looking good on the last couple I can't get to. I'm definitely gonna have to get a wrench and or a swivel socket to get to them. All right, and that's it. So we're gonna keep going on this and rip these apart. Make sure you take care of all your bolts and know where they're at. 
Uh, all right, y'all. So what I'm doing is I have <clears throat> loosened all these 10 millimeters on a water jacket up. With, and instead of pulling it off, I'm going to pull the head off and then I'll rip that apart after I get it out. Uh, just because I don't want to mess with these bottom two that I can't really get to. I don't have the right tool for the job right here at this moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, head off completely. And then we'll remove the whole thing and then I'll be able to access those water jacket bolts anyway. All right, so we're going to go ahead and again, make sure you keep them all together. Make sure you're very careful when you are loosening them. Okay, you don't want to snap them. And these are all coming out nice, so I'm very happy with that. Very good. All right, and we're going to go ahead and get these all apart. And then we're going to see where the water's coming from. Also be, you see where I'm at right here, there's a temperature sensor, just make sure you disconnect it. It's usually just a couple pop out here. They're color coded. All right, just make sure you don't pinch your wires when you put your head back together here. Ugh. One in the bottom here, there's a bunch of these head bolts. Make sure you go one by one and you don't miss any of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's 14 bolts that I'm saying. Make sure you got them all. Make sure you keep them all together. All right, let's get this done. <laughs> all right, y'all, we're down to the last couple head bolts. So we're going to back these out. Like I said, I like to do them by hand. Once you bust them loose, you can pull them out with air tools or an impact or something, you know, whatever it's whatever. But I want to make sure you don't snap the bolts. <clears throat> Literally the last one right here. <clears throat> and then what we have is like right here. There is a groove where you can fit like a pry bar or a big flathead and you need to get a dead blow hammer and i don't see mine so i'm probably going to use something stupid like a small sledge or a ball peen or a claw hammer and uh, you got to knock the seal loose on this head um so kind of like wedge a pry bar or a oh mine's coming right off that's beautiful i don't even have to beat it or a um, screwdriver into there and that'll pop loose and this thing is already loose look at that i don't even have to to kill it so that's great i'm happy i don't have to do that and i still got a ground wire on the bottom that i wasn't easily accessible so i'll be able to get to that now moment of truth here what are we missing oh i got one more i missed See, that's why you always got to be careful we got one more right here come on little buddy all right and we're gonna get to see the inside of this come on back on there Take a little weight off that and I'll be able to unscrew it by hand if I lift it up a little bit. Come on. Alright, alright. This is the fun stuff. Come on, little bud. Get out of there. Thought it was right there. Apparently not. So close. Ah, uh, come on, dude. Everything's got to be a pain in the butt. It's like so... There it is. Alright. All right, moment of truth. Let's look at this thing. All right. Well, looks like we might have just had a gasket failure. I don't see any pinholes. Look at that. It looks pretty good. Totally salvageable. Um, looks like a gasket failure. So I'm going to have to clean this up. See where the, the water rotted here around that? Looks like the water uh, made its way in here. Then we had a gasket failure right there. Hey y'all, I just wanted to show you where the gasket failed. See that? And then the gas is good. There's no holes in the cylinder head, so there's no water intrusion that way. It's great. A lot of times there's a hole right there. And you'll see it like there'll be a hole right there or something where it'll eat through, but that's just gasket failure it looks like. And then the cylinder looks not too shabby. We're going to investigate a little more, but looks like it might be usable. You can see it. So I cleaned this up and put it back together. It may just run beautiful. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, order a set of gaskets and clean this up, and we're gonna put it back together. So check it all out later. We're gonna have another video on the gasket installation at Chef Outdoors. Like and subscribe.